Evening Cornell, you're watching Sun Center, the Daily Sun's official multimedia broadcast. Streaming directly from the center of the action, our very office, will bring you closer to the campus buzz and into the conversation. Tonight's top stories feature gorge safety and bridge barriers. And we brought There's a lot of, of dangers that are inherent in the gorges, and, and the biggest of them is the recirculation from the strong currents underneath the, the waterfalls um, where most students and, and other folks uh, think it's safe and, and, and fun to swim. What they don't realize is that the pool below is uh, about as deep as the waterfall is high. The, the plan all along has been to make it clear what areas are unsafe, how to, but how to safely use the areas that we have, how to safely use the trails and the destinations. We now welcome two experts on gorge safety. Todd Miner, Director of Cornell Outdoor Education and a member of the Gorge Safety Committee, and Anisha Chopra, the Student Assembly Representative and Liaison on Gorge Safety. So my first question uh, for both of you is, after the three accidental deaths last summer, what was the university's main response to this lapse in safety? Well, I, first I'd say I'm not sure it was a lapse in safety. I think it, um, the gorges are natural hazards and um, there we just had uh, a tragic um, uh, constellation of, of um, deaths and uh, th these things can happen anytime people are in the outdoors so but the university definitely responded and uh, did so in a number of ways um, uh, President Scorton established a task force that um, it, that I'm part of now or the outgrowth of that and um, and trail work was a big part of that signage is another part um, that certainly the Gorge Stewards program that I've been working with is a big part of it and education and finally enforcement. So it's a multi-pronged approach to try to make the gorges accessible, encourage students to use them because the university knows the, the value of the gorges to the student experience, to Cornell's history. I mean, they're, they're integral to, to the, what Cornell is. Um, so. Um, they're important, but they're also, they can be deadly, and so it's a balance between uh, that access and encouraging people to use them and find balance in their life and the beauty of where we live and um, the safety of students and, and all the users of the gorges. And Nisha, as a student and someone who works closely with the university officials, mm -hmm. do you agree with that? Is this, do you think that um, the Gorge Steward Program is a good thing that's going to be helping a lot with the student safety? Absolutely, I definitely agree. I think, again, the lapse was more in just providing knowledge to students. For most of us, these gorges are something completely new. We've never been around them and they're integral to the Cornell College experience. So we obviously want to go and explore them, but there had been information out there to let us know how to do it safely, but it wasn't being pushed to us as much and in a more effective way, or as effective way as it could have been. So has the steward program been effective? I mean, how many students have these stewards talked to in the gorges? They've, um, they're talking to, um, hunt, well, over a hundred um, folks in the gorge every day. Um, and that was before the students came back. So those, they were definitely summer students, graduate students, um, visiting students, but also community members, townies, staff, faculty, uh, alumni. Um, so. And we've seen a, a almost a doubling since the students have returned. So it's somewhere. It, maybe it is hundreds, because um, uh, it was averaging I think 130 through the summer, which surprised a number of us. We didn't realize there was that much use. And uh, um, this is the first. The Gorge Stewards. One of their successes is the first time we've actually documented what the use of the gorge is. Prior to that, we had guesses, but we really didn't know. So every day we've got somebody that's walking, recording what they see. Uh, talking to people, uh, observing what the activities are, sharing the information. I think of, I think of the gorges as being the university, not only eyes and ears, but also the voice to be able to share some of that information and, and tell students and visitors where it's safe to swim, where it isn't, where the good trails are, how the gorge is formed, um, you know, why they're important to Cornell. And where communities. is it safe to swim? Is there a good place for students to go? Um, yeah, there's plenty of places off campus to state parks. Um, Buttermilk Falls, Truman, 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 Tagannock. And what's great is due to our new funding um, from last year, we are actually providing buses to go to these and explore gorges safely. 
where they have lifeguards, where you can swim, and I think they go through this weekend? Mm -hmm. Through uh, Monday uh, of Labor Day. Through Labor Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, and those, I mean, if, if folks haven't gone to these parks, I mean, there's diving boards, and they're right up against the waterfalls. They're spectacular. They're just awesome on a cool day. And in addition, there's these great hikes that go all through the park, and it's totally free to students. Um, the buses, the admission, um, it's a great place to just lay out in the sun. A uh, great place to go with a friend and, and relax and forget about the academics for a little bit and um, enjoy the, the bounty of the Finger Lakes. Great. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you. My pleasure. Up next, we look at how the university is reimagining gorge safety with fences. The purpose of the project is to reduce the risk of jumping suicides uh, from the bridges uh, on or near the Cornell campus. And the, the project is basically installing a system of horizontal net systems uh, beneath the seven bridges surrounding the Cornell campus, as well as some vertical fencing in some of the critical areas. Right. We worked with the uh, City of Ithaca and the City of Ithaca Planning Board uh, to come up with some type of solution that was better than the initial uh, fences that we put on the bridges. Uh, transitioned into a more uh, architectural fencing and there was still some opposition to that within the community. Anybody who jumps into these nets, I sort of make it akin to jumping into a cheese grater. It, it's a metal nest with metal support bars, uh, and it's going to do some injury to that individual. You're going to fall into the net, you're going to be sort of stuck in this no man's land in a net that it's very difficult to move into because it's very, very small gauge metal. Uh, so it, it, it's going to, you're going to get injured no matter what you do. We did some testing. We have a net panel at the Ithaca Fire Department Training Tower. We've done some net testing of that with a 185-pound mannequin, and when it strikes that net, it, it is a pretty violent strike. Good evening. On Tuesday, Cornell began the process of removing the fences that surround most of the university's bridges and installing permanent nets instead. Here with us tonight to comment is Sharon Dittman, Associate Director of Community Relations at Gannett Health Services. Good evening, Sharon. Hello. In your opinion, how will the removal of the fences affect overall student safety and mental health? I think the most important thing to know right off the bat is that the nets won't be the fences won't come down until the nets have been installed and tested. So it'll be one bridge at a time. As soon as we have these net systems in place, which include the wire mesh of the net, heat sensors, and cameras, then the fences will come down. So we don't expect a change in the safety to the community. This is means restriction to prevent people from jumping from the bridges. I think we're all looking forward to the removal of the fences and opening up the vistas from the bridges. Uh, being out in nature is really restorative to our physical and our mental health, and I think we are really blessed here in Ithaca to have such beautiful natural surroundings, and the bridges give us access right on campus. I think it will be a boost for all of us. Great. And in some ways, the fences were a constant reminder of the tragedies that caused them to be built in the first place. Did that affect student morale? I think there's no more intense reminder of tragedy than further tragedies. Before those fences went up, uh, there were a lot of people who were deeply affected by the deaths of students on campus. Um, those who knew people who died, as well as those who witnessed the tragedies. Putting the fences up, uh, probably protected us from potential for further harm. Um, but did they, in some ways, serve as reminders? I think at first they did. And in fact, I think some people actually went to the bridges to be reminded and to remember. But with the passage of time, they, the fences have faded from view of, for most people. I think people walk across those bridges without even noticing. Um, other people see them there and they are reminded in a very tangible way of the lengths this community went to to protect its vulnerable members and um, really allow us to care for one another. I'm hoping that as the fences come down they're also going to prompt more conversation among us about the other things that we do to watch out for one another and for those who are really in distress. Great. And while they don't block the bridges in the same way that the fences did, will the nets still serve as a successful preventative measure? We believe they will. 
uh, we both the fences and the nets were modeled after experiences in other communities where they have worked to prevent suicide attempts as well as suicides. Great. And how will the student population react to the removal of the fences? I think a lot of people are going to be celebrating. <laughs> They're going to have a chance, maybe for the first time, for some members of the community and, and for others uh, who have been missing them for years to really have unobstructed views out over the vistas and down into the gorges. And those are really awesome experiences. I think we're going to see more cameras on the bridges. I hope we'll see people lingering more on the bridges. I know we're going to have some people who are going to miss the fences, which gave them more of a sense of security walking across the bridges. Um, but I think for many people, they're going to have the feeling that the installation of the net systems replacing the fences is really a, a symbolic um, reminder that we have a lot to do to protect one another and that the university and Ithaca together have found a way to do that. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming down. We look forward to the removal of those fences. Yeah, so thank we you. all.